okay so if you're prioritizing space what do you do when you get that space or like <laughs> what are you, what are you doing or is that even what you want or how can you design a new life and be really intentional with what you're doing while obviously maintaining traction and growth in your business welcome to whole and unleashed a podcast about coming home to ourselves i'm your host jessica Locke a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi, welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me. I am super excited to get to hear about your story and how you built your business. But before we go super deep, (laughs) um, let's introduce who Sarah is. Well, first of all, I am so excited to um, be here and chat about everything that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, Yeah, my name is Sarah Williams. I'm the founder of Rebel Office. And I've been, I don't know, doing this for six years now, and um, it's it's been a journey for sure. Uh, now, nowadays, we're a business consultant um, agency. We've been gone through a ton of evolutions just through like OBMs and graphic design and everything, and we're really finding our stride in tech setup and a lot of the strategic implementation and integration of tools and yeah, it's, it's been great. So yeah, we support entrepreneurs. Um, and just me learning how to lead a team has been a whole other thing as we've grown. Um, but yeah, I guess in simplest terms, business strategy for sure. Business strategy. I love how you talked about like the different roles and iterations that you started with until you found, I guess, this right now. Would you mind sharing about how rebel office came to be like why rebel office and what was like the intention at first yeah to be honest uh not a ton of intention i kind of fell into it um you guys i'm gonna be an open book this (laughs) episode because i've gone through it all um yeah no right out of university i went and worked at a consulting firm right out of school and i just i don't know i was also doing graphic design on the side and it just kind of carried on. We'll probably get into it. I went through some stuff um, at this company. I just decided it wasn't good fit ethically and just with what I wanted to do. So yeah, I I quit that. <laughs> I went and traveled um, in South America for two months. I went to Peru, Bolivia, and Chile for two months. And then while I was down there, um, I just like officially registered my business with my province up here in Canada. And yeah, it, it's just it literally just kind of fell into it. It was just, I could do it. I was making money at the time. I didn't want to be at the company I was at. And it was just like, all right, let's, I guess, let's go. (laughs) Which is so interesting because I think so often we get into like challenging circumstances, but it also nudges us in a direction that we might've not expected to go. Totally. And I feel like that's just been, that literally sums up my experience as an entrepreneur, to be honest. I feel like we encounter these roadblocks and I think I've learned, it's kind of a resiliency thing. Like it's so easy to just be like, oh, okay, well, that's just the universe saying, nope, like not for you. Um, And then give up on it. But it's like, okay, well, maybe there's a lesson in there to be learned or like, how can I turn this into something that I want and like actively being a participant in like, I knew that I wanted more lifestyle freedom. I knew that I am a horrible employee and like, (laughs) I felt like I could run a business better and that there was a different way to be doing business. And I wanted to be the one to create that. So I did it. And like, obviously like quitting my job wasn't in the plans, moving back in with my parents and traveling South America for two months also wasn't in my plans but it's led me to where I am now. And it's like, it's crazy. You mentioned that you registered Rebel Office when you were in South America. 
yeah was there anything that led to that moment while you were traveling like I'm doing this (laughs) yeah for sure I mean probably um I like I said I've been doing like freelance graphic design for a while and I so basically what I did was I went and traveled um Bolivia and Chile with some friends from university right after I had quit because I'm like cool like I moved back home with my parents I was like independent and now I whatever um so let's go so I did that for a month and then I spent the second month volunteering um at an orphanage in Lima Peru and um while I was there I just had a lot of like downtime like we were volunteering and then um the house rules were kind of strict like we weren't really like no one really partied so I just worked on my business and I was like what do I want to do I had like just finished reading the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss and I was like what what can I do and I really leaned in on the graphic design stuff at the time because that's what I had validation like people were paying me for and then yeah there was one computer in the volunteer house and (laughs) so like right before we went out in the morning um to to go volunteer I hopped on and I had been doing some research already like how do I register my business what does that look like how do I do this properly and then yeah I just like hopped onto the Ontario government website and registered and made that official while I was over there so wow yeah and how has that evolved afterwards like you know we mentioned the iterations and I guess like also knowing like you had the foundation of graphic design but also being open to pivoting just because you have mm. that skill doesn't mean that's the only skill that's going to make you money oh oh my gosh absolutely and I think I discovered that pretty quickly like I was doing graphic design I learned very quickly how important systems were doing that like because I had fallen into running a business I didn't know what I was doing like I was a hot mess in terms of like everything we were doing I was recreating invoices I was like doing all this stuff that was taking so much time and I think at that time too I mean if we're being honest I felt like I had to be busy because people were like well, what are you doing with your life? How successful are you? You just started your business. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm busy. Like I'm working. So, and it's like, I like force myself to be busy and not productive anyways, whatever. Um, but, uh, uh, what was I saying here now? Oh no, I forgot my thought. What was your question? About how, um, oh, how pivoting the beginning. Yeah. 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 So definitely learned uh, the value of systems. And then while I started to implement it myself, I was falling out of love with doing design stuff for clients. And I was really leaning into the systems and became more of like a client experience consultant. And it's really just kind of evolved. I had a membership at one point. Um, I, I, I'm honestly, I feel like I've tried it all. And I think what it really comes back to is like, I love building businesses. So for me, I kind of use rebel office as like an experiment to be like, okay, like this is an idea. This is what people are doing. Let's see how it happens, what the process is like. And I feel like that kind of curiosity in myself and using rebel office as kind of like a guinea pig for a lot of things has helped us support our clients because we're like, oh yeah, we actually know how that process works because we've hosted a webinar before, or we've launched a membership or we have digital products or we do one-on-one code like we've I've it's I don't even know how to explain it and like pivoting this isn't to say like pivoting is terrifying like to this day even every time I like change our offers and stuff I like internally panic and (laughs) it's fine um I just like cry (laughs) on my kitchen floor but it's I think an important process and I and I'm hoping that while my pivots have been pretty dramatic with rebel office because we're constantly I'm constantly trying to figure out what I feel most aligned with and and not only what gets traction with our audience but like what I feel good doing and what my team like what adds value to our lives not just our bank accounts do you know what I mean um but yeah it's just I mean pivoting is just a, a thing and I'm hoping that while ours have been dramatic, that it doesn't always have to be that way. Like it it can just be slight adjustments and I'm getting a little bit more graceful with how we shift things to anytime something doesn't feel totally right anymore. I'm a lot more in tune with 
my body now and like my mind learning human design has been like a huge piece of that is just learning how I like think through things but um yeah pivoting doesn't mean like full 180 to another direction sometimes it's just like tweaking and saying okay like that's not quite right what can I do instead or what did I like about that and what did I not and then making adjustments that way yeah and like it's also so permission giving when you hear it from someone that yeah I kind of changed my business it sounds so courageous but when it's your time to do it there are so much stuff that comes out from under the rug that we're like yeah but you know if this is not who I am like I was the quote-unquote expert in this field and I don't want to do it anymore what does that mean for me but then Mm -hmm. allowing your curiosity your joy to pull you to something that feels more aligned like you said it gives you a wider, you know, spectrum of experiences. So you can show up for your clients for whatever they need. (laughs) Like you're like, I've kind of tried this for a little bit. And also like, yeah, this is what I specialize in. And it's, it's scary. It sounds so good when we hear from other people, but when it comes to ourselves, it's like, what do we do? What is the right thing to do? Quote unquote for me. Yeah. Well, and it does honestly feel like, at least for me, it's, every time that I would go through a major shift in my business, it'd be like, well, I failed at the last thing instead of looking at it. And like, that's just limiting beliefs. That stuff comes up every time. Whereas I always try to reframe it when I feel that stuff coming up where it's like, well, what did I learn from that last chapter that's going to contribute to the next one? And honestly, that's taken me like six years to figure out how to like reframe that. But, but you're right. Like it is, it's so easy to look at people and be like, oh, well, that's a natural, like that makes sense why they made that change. But when you're in there doing it, it's just like, everyone's going to think I'm a failure. They're going to think I'm a fraud because I'm changing like all this nasty stuff that you say to yourself that you would never actually say to anyone else. So it's like, why are you saying it to yourself? But we all go through it. So yeah, it's definitely a, a learning thing. And I think like, honestly, like tuning into your body and like taking time to just like see how stuff is actually feeling makes such a difference. I love that. And I also wanted to say congratulations because I know you just celebrated your second <laughs> year in business. Yes. <laughs> what has been some of the, I guess, the tools or practices that help you keep showing up? Mm. I don't know, like for lack of a better word, because it is your business, but you're still showing up in a way that's authentic and aligned to you, even when things are hard. Like what helps yes. you crown your business and keep expanding okay difficult question because like (laughs) I feel like I don't always show up and and it's nice to hear um but yeah I think tuning back into like I I've always prioritized and I've always felt it was really important to keep rebel office's values at the forefront no matter where we're shifting to um and I've always valued transparency and like even if I'm going through a hard time, like for me to show up on Instagram and be like, yeah, it's all good. We're super successful. That's not doing anyone any favors. I don't care if people look at me and be like, oh, she's failing at this or whatever sort of limiting beliefs come up. If there's someone out there that is going through the same thing and they need that permission to shift as well. I think I've always just wanted to, one of our values is to connect and show up with compassion. That's, um, or dare to connect and show up with compassion. Um, and I try to do that with myself as well, but I just want to like, I've always just prioritized showing the real process of business because everyone's social media is a highlight reel as much as we say, Oh, I'm being authentic. We're still putting our best foot forward, even if we're trying to show it as an unfiltered thing, there's still some sort of filter in there. Right. So I think it's just, and like, I still do it, but I still try to give some sort of truth to be like, look, this is what I'm actually going through. This is why I made this decision. This is how I came to this point. And if that helps someone, good. <laughs> like that's really all I really want it to do. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't see the value in, in lying and making us seem more successful or foolproof or um we're great and we don't ever change our minds and whatever that just doesn't make sense because that's not real right oh thank you for pulling in that part because we hear about authenticity but what does that mean how like how do you embody authenticity and just like the example you set up like yeah I'm not feeling my best but I'm 
for me, showing up just means, hey, I'm here. It doesn't mean you're doing above and beyond or you're being perfect all the time. In fact, that's it's something that's been on my mind because a lot of people that have been in my life or been following me, they're like, look at you right now. Everything is working. Everything seems great. I'm like, I've also shared like the harder things, but it was mm-hmm. like obviously filtered through my, you know, comprehension through my insights of those hard experiences so even though when I was sharing the hard times it was you know presented nicely exactly yeah right. like and I'm, I'm just like yeah <laughs> I still don't like show up on Instagram stories like sobbing being like this happened and oh my god like it, it's it's not like I had to let go of someone from my team today and I cried after that conversation like it was it's it's horrible but I didn't go on stories being like this happened and like so you're absolutely right I I think we do still as authentic as we try to be. And maybe eventually I'll share the lessons that I've learned from this. And this is how this happened, but it's, you're right. It's in a presented format. So I don't know how to get away from that. Right. Well, it's also, but it's also because we're here to serve and yeah, to be of service. And sometimes mm. us crying, if it doesn't feel right for us to be vulnerable at that moment, it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't mean we're being fake. I think there is, there is a balance that, you know, we each figure out what it is, but I just so appreciate that point because people are like, be authentic. And then you see them sharing about their hard things. And it's like, are you serving? Are you connecting? Does it feel good for you? I think that's the most important part. Yeah. I love that. You have um, an amazing offer that I've seen. Like you have so many amazing offers. (laughs) I swear when my business grow, and I'm not just saying it because of you, but I've been like (laughs) seeing what you do for like the past year. I'm like, when my business grows and I have a team, I have to get Sarah (laughs) because like (laughs) you have something and one of your offers called work parties. Yeah. What is the premise of that? What happens? What is a work party? (laughs) A work party is our like VIP day structured offer. It's actually recently changed. So we had it as like a five hour intensive where we would sit down with the visionary slash their team as well. And we would work on something specific in their business for that five hours. It's shifted a bit because what I found was that five hours straight is very overwhelming for someone who's making a lot of decisions. So what we've actually done is we have made our work parties week long. So from Monday through Thursday, there's two hour intensives each day. And we basically audit different areas of your business each day so that you can start making strategic decisions. But I'm also there to be like, but is that aligned? Like, how does that feel? Like, what does, what does that look like? And then doing like financial projections and designing offers and client experiences. We go through literally every single corner of your business Um, But it happens over a week. So it is intensive and we're there to support you outside of the the calls. Um, But I think it's important for people to remember to have fun. And that's kind of where this offer came from. A lot of entrepreneurs are alone and they're building their business alone. Even if they have a team, they can't really be open and honest about their strategy with their team because they're trying to lead their team. And so the work parties are kind of designed to like, look, this is your permission slip to like step out of the day-to-day of your business and show up with me and we can just like have fun, work on your business, enjoy it, um, but also come out and build a strategy and make sure that the systems are in place to execute so that you can take it and like move forward and you feel confident in it because I don't know, people just take running a business so seriously and it is, and they take themselves so seriously. So it's like, how can we make building your business and working on your business instead of in it really, truly enjoyable. And that's kind of where that came from. Mm, That sounds so supportive because I can totally resonate with just at the beginning of trying to figure out what my business was like five years ago, I was so busy in doing, I was keeping myself busy, but none of that was necessarily productive or aligned. It was simply things that I learned. And there are so many amazing contents out there, but not everything is catered to us. So having mm-hmm. someone call this a work party, hold space for me to just show up without like being worried, because I, I think it, it almost feels like you're holding my hand for a week. <laughs> it's like, I, I, yeah, I can disconnect and just be and like share because like when I think about finances or projections my brain is like (laughs) (laughs) oh my god (laughs) yeah oh my god and I know it doesn't have to be hard but I don't even know where to start so yeah this sounds amazing 
Yeah, no, honestly, they're so fun. I love doing it. It like does not feel like work for me. So um, yeah, it's totally great. And the new structure seems to be working really, really well and people are enjoying it. So yeah, I'm excited. Mm, yeah, and it makes sense because I think about it, like my brain would be like, oh, a five hour would be great. I get everything done. But then I I think even with life, I forget to take into account like the integration, like the mm-hmm. breathing, like what it, sometimes you need to excel. You're like, inhaling everything I don't think that's a good expression but you're you're not you're taking in everything and then it's like how is everything sitting with you so that yeah. sounds again supportive and fun and some people need time to like so again going back to human design I'm a projector like I need time to like sleep on it okay like I need that space to be like okay I've made all these big decisions I can be excited about them at the time and then I can wake up the next day and be like, okay, maybe I need to like backpedal a little bit. Like how do I go back and and realign? So that's kind of where that came from as well. So yeah, super important to make that space. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And what are some other offers that you have currently? I know you have a lot. We're we're still experimenting. Yeah. No, um, something that's worked really well. So we were working one-on-one with clients doing ongoing um, like OBM integrator type support. Um, the implementation Can was a little expand? bit. Can you How does that look like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, so a lot of it was more like um, being there and doing strategic planning, but then also okay, so this is a project that you want to do. You want to launch a new lead magnet or you want to launch this course or you want to um, get your blog going so that you can grow your list, whatever those projects are. So we would do that planning and then say, okay, now let's get it done. And then we would go in there and do that. Um, We have shifted a little bit away from one-on-one, just again, more trying to figure out what business model works for me and my team. Um, in a way that feels really good. And we've recently launched um, our on-demand service. So it's basically our one-on-one offers restructured to be like a two weeks tops delivery. So if someone wants a new lead magnet, they come do a little bit of prep work and then we build out everything from their lead magnet all the way through their like emails and getting the tech set up and the sales pages and all of that stuff um, over a two week period. So it's a really fast turnaround. We also have a course on demand. So if you wanna launch a digital course, then we do all the sales pages, platform setup, all of that stuff, the workbook templates, everything that you need. Um, And it's just a quicker way to really target specific projects that people wanna get done. So um, yeah, again, that's been going really well as well. And it's been fun to experiment with what types of on-demand services people want. But yeah, it's just a lot of technical stuff that quite frankly is really overwhelming for a lot of entrepreneurs and myself and my team, we love it. So it's like, okay, let's take that off your plate. You sound like a business fairy at this point. I'm like, I wish I knew someone like you or that there was like businesses that could help with that instead of trying to figure out all by myself and also realizing that my mindset was like nowhere near being able to sustain a business. What are some of I guess this is, it sounds very general, also specific, like some of the biggest lessons you've learned when, as you, as your business grew, as you started to get a team, as you started to get more clients. Yeah. I mean, from like a leadership perspective, I would definitely say like, again, like leaning into the, the change, I think for a lot of us, we're so focused on like the next destination or the next goal like a hundred K gets thrown around a lot or like six figures gets thrown around a lot. Okay. If you're spending 90% of that on expenses and you're only taking home 10 K, like, is that worth it? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So I think like, if you're so focused on a goal, it's so important to remember to actually enjoy where you are now. Um, and to enjoy the process, because when you hit that goal, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is like, even if you hit the 10 K month milestone or whatever it is, or the 30 K month milestone, then you're still going to want more when you get there. So it's like, when do you stop and actually appreciate it? When do you stop and actually enjoy it? Because your goals are always going to keep shifting on you. So if you keep doing that and you're like, okay, well, whenever I get there, then I'll finally chill out. Or like, whenever I get there, then I'll finally take care of myself or 
that's not realistic because if you can't build those practices in and take care of yourself now or um, just enjoy life now, then you're not going to whenever you get to where you think you want to go because that's just going to keep moving. So yeah, yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I can resonate so much. Like I had this vision, like we met at a mastermind last Mm -hmm. year and my, I didn't realize the assumption I was holding is that, oh, you know, once people hit five figures, six figures, whatever that milestone is, their lives are easy. They don't need to worry about their business. Yeah. But then as I saw, I'm like, no, we all struggle through the same exact things, no matter what level you're at. And my assumption of being like, oh, once I have all this money, I won't need to worry and all that. It was not helping me at the moment because I wasn't taking care of myself. I was so busy with accomplishing, doing that. My body was like, but you have not rested. You are not <laughs> no. sleeping enough. And my mom's like, I just need to do more to get there. Yeah. And it's exactly. And I was, this was me. Like when at the beginning of the pandemic stuff, kind of like rebel office took off, people were trying to figure out how to run their businesses online. It was in a horrible way. It was good for business. So yeah, I think that I took on so much and I was so focused on hitting our financial targets and we kept doing better and better every month. And I was like, okay, just keep saying yes and figure it out. And like, we're it's like, it's working. Oh my gosh. And I think at the beginning of this year, I had a bit of a breakthrough or depending on when this goes out, January, 2021, what year is it? Um, and, uh, I was just kind of like, it's not worth it. Like us bringing in however much amount of money that we were doing at the time, it's not worth my inner peace. It's not worth me being constantly stressed and not being able to deliver on clients because we're too stretched. We're stretched too thin it's just not worth it. And I was ready to burn it all down. And I had my team be like, Nope, it's okay. Let's just do this transition, like slowly, but we're going to figure out a way to get out of this. Um, But yeah, I think, honestly, like, whenever we think about a goal, that's why I'm so now I'm really big on alignment and think it's so important to like, if stuff starts to feel overwhelming, just take a step back and figure something else out. Because feeling that stress and constantly pushing towards a goal is not all there is to life. Like you have to also live every single day. So why not enjoy it? Oh, yes. I'm like, if I could frame words, which you can, but I'm like, it's true. Like you have to live life. There's all this doing that you get to do, but remembering that, like you said, take a step back. And it's something that goes against so much of our belief because we think, Hey, this is where we're at when I get to the next level. So we have to do so much more, but sometimes Mm -hmm. it's actually just stepping back and see, Hey, what's preventing us from going there in a way that's enjoyable and pleasurable because things don't have to be hard. And when you're actually enjoying it, your energy comes across so much better, which means that you're generally selling better (laughs) and which means that you're actually performing better. It's crazy how, like you said, it's basically the opposite that happens what you think will So when you actually take a step back and make that space for things to happen and for you to take care of yourself and for you to work on projects that you actually want to work on, your energetic intention behind that is going to be so much stronger and it's going to come across so much better, which means it's going to perform better. Yeah, it's crazy. Have have you noticed that, that shift ever since like, I guess, from the beginning of January till now? 100%. Well, because I think a big concern for me, like as you pivot, you're always like, okay, well, if something was working at that level and then we change it, we're going to lose it. So for me, when we were slowly kind of transitioning away from one-on-one work, which was our biggest revenue generator, then it's like, okay, well, if I say goodbye to those clients, then we're not going to be making any money. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. the total opposite was true. We've maintained or surpassed what we were doing before And I have time in my day to like exercise and eat breakfast. And I have time to like have actual conversations with my team during our meetings instead of constantly being like, okay, where are we at? What needs to happen? Like, so yeah, it's huge. We've had the space to not work on Fridays for clients. We work Monday through Thursday and that's our work week. So yeah, I think it's so important because then when you're enjoying it, again, you show up better um, or like with more intention. So I don't know. I'm also a big, like four, four day work week advocate. So I know that uh, some countries have like started to talk about it, but yeah, I don't know. I just, it's, yeah, it's crazy how 
how much difference it does make, I've definitely noticed it. Yeah, because it's about the quality of what we put out there. Yeah. Like a part of us understands that. But then there's also maybe it's fear-based when I was like trying to do more. It's probably fear-based and out of insecurity that I, oh, not enough is happening. But I recently just shared a story because last month, like my glasses broke. I got sick. My husband got sick. And then I got my period. And it was like, bam, bam, one thing after another. But like business-wise, it was the most like expensive and successful because the things that I set, the seeds that I planted ahead of time, I guess, the slow, slow expanding my business for the past year has, it was taking root. And it was just like, so interesting to see, oh, I'm not jeopardizing my health. I'm not overextending. And my energy is just so much more efficient. Mm -hmm. Well, and and like, like, (laughs) a big question I ask is like, if you don't have time to take care of yourself now before your business fully takes off, when it starts getting super busy, do you think you're going to have time then to do it? Like, that's why you need to build those habits beforehand. And for me, I'm saying this like, yeah, absolutely. You do this. I was not, I was not good at this. Okay. I'm still not like super at it, but it's taken time to just be like, and honestly, I think a big shift was, um, last year where I was like, I cannot keep going like this. I'm like, my blood pressure is way too high. Like I need to figure something out. So, and yeah, you just kind of like learn as you go and hopefully you don't have to go through the same struggles that I did. You just, just listen and start taking care of yourself. But I know that's easier said than done. Um, because you're right. You just constantly think like, what's one more thing I can do today to get me closer. And it's like, sometimes just not doing anything's important. I will say, I think a big goal for me was having space during the day. And when I finally started to have that space, I felt really lost because I was like, what do, what do I do with myself now that my team's taking care of stuff or now that we're ahead on some things or now like, And I'm like, what do I do? Like, what's my purpose? Where am I going? Um, So that's been an adjustment that I'm going to be totally honest. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how to not like as soon as I feel like there's quietness or space where I don't want to take on another project because I have the time. So I'm just learning how to like adapt to that now. But yeah, it's taken me six years to get to this point. So (laughs) I love that you brought that point so much because, you know, in between like the first five years I wouldn't even call my business a business I was doing a bit of graphic design I wanted to do coaching yoga but I wasn't really making a lot of money it seemed like a hobby that could generate a little bit of money here and there yeah um but my biggest struggle was because I went through so much burnout and then I was trying to recover from burnout so I created a lot of spaciousness but then I was I didn't know what to do with myself it's almost like I was so addicted to the doing that the space made me feel more anxious, made me feel more like, <gasps> so it, it was really regulating myself to be okay with this space and also like trying with a little bit of space and then a little bit more of space until, you know, a lot more spaciousness felt comfortable. So you calling that and naming that is thank you. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so, so often we think just create more space in your business and you'll feel good. No, because there, are, there is a side effect. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I mean, everyone, again, throws around like lifestyle freedom. And like, that's what I want. Do you know, like, what does that actually mean for you, though? Like, what are you actually working towards? If you like being busy, what I started to do, uh, because I had the same thing, every time I would slow down, I would get super anxious and be like, I just need to be doing something to like feel better. So I started to actually like I would book in spa appointments. So I'd have like an appointment and it's in my calendar. But then like, So I was focused on just getting there. And then once I was there, you're literally forced to slow down and like (laughs) sleep on a bed, right? right? (laughs) So fall asleep. And I'm like, yeah, these, I think these outer accountabilities are so, I don't want to call it accountability because then it becomes another task. But, you know, in a sense where you're like, I just need to book this, go there, do that, show up until I think our nervous system can calibrate to this like new, new way of being that we're so not used to. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so good. I like I can feel it in my body. It's like, yes, this is this is the the hard things that not a lot of people talk about as much, especially in the online business world. Like what were I'm pretty sure you've seen it all in the past six years. Like, have you seen a recent shift like before the pandemic, after the pandemic of where online businesses are moving towards? I mean, I definitely do think people are prioritizing their lifestyle and their health more for sure. 
people do seem to be slowing down a lot. Um, and not in the fact that like their businesses are slowing down in growth. I think people are just more conscious of how they're spending their time and what they enjoy doing. And that's not even in online business. Like that's with everyone seemingly quitting their jobs or not going back to jobs that they hate or everything that's going on in the world. And like everyone's lifestyle seems to be like shifting a little bit and no one really knows what's going on. Um, but in the online space, I'm seeing that as well. Like people are just like, well, I no longer want to do that. I did it. I was like, I no longer want to do this. I'm unhappy. How can I change it? And I'm seeing that being reflected, um, with others in the online space as well. So I love it. I think it's just a different world to navigate and try to figure out like we were just talking about, okay, so if you're prioritizing space, what do you do when you get that space? Or like, <laughs> what are what are you doing? Or is that even what you want? Or how can you design a new life and be really intentional with what you're doing while obviously maintaining traction and growth in your business? So yeah, it's it's a weird, I think people are still trying to figure it out, but they're on the right track, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is life, right? We try to figure out one thing <laughs> and then something else comes along as yeah. usual. <laughs> there yeah. is something, one of your offers, I mean, I was looking for your website. I'm like, she has so many great things. And I remember you launched the anti-social seller. Yeah. And I love this so much because so many business owners that are first starting out, I hear the overwhelm of having to show up online what is the online presence having to sell through social media doesn't feel good so you kind of create it like a support a remedy for that what yeah. is it <laughs> yeah so the anti-social seller is a self-guided program um and i think i mean if i was to tell anyone anything when they first started it would be to limit the time that they spend on social and that's not to say like social media is a great tool for business. I don't even use it for personal use. I keep my notifications off. So I'm only on it like very intentionally. Um, it just became a lot and comparison is like a real thing and it can be a very dangerous thing. So I think that what this program is, is like for people who do find either social media a lot or they don't want to solely rely on social media to grow their business. There are people who put all of their eggs in the social media basket and that works for them. There are others I've worked with clients who don't even have social media accounts at all and their business is entirely referral based and they're ma making multi six figures, right? Like you don't need social media to be successful, um, but it's a great connection tool. So basically this program is like, how can you not rely on social media. So like it's there if you want it to be there, you can use it and like for market research or use it to connect with your audience if you want to. But if you don't, there's other ways to grow your business as well. And maybe just like diversifying your marketing tactics a little bit so that mm -hmm. you're not always focused on that. So yeah, that program gives you five different ways other than social media to really diversify how you get clients. It, it's such a good way to also show people like you know yeah if you don't enjoy social media <laughs> you don't have, there are other ways around it, especially hearing like you can grow a business successful wise referral base and I think sometimes referral base people think like oh then how do I get enough people how do I get more people like you know the internal yeah. pressure that we apply on ourselves but also oh, sure. because social media I feel like it's a great platform but I also know there's like you know the shadow side because if I'm not checking in with myself if I'm mindlessly scrolling then I'm taking in like a buffet of energies that I was like, I was feeling a mess. And now I'm taking like extra energy. <laughs> Everyone else knowing. is. Like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because they're, they share everything there. And I'm like, this is triggering reaction to me. It's like a chain reaction, but being able to show up intentionally is helpful. But also if you don't want to use it, yeah, limit it, limit those energies because yeah. everything we do is energy. The relationships that we have, the conversations that we have and just do what feels better yeah. <laughs> for you. And it is it 100% do what actually works for you and your business. And like going back to the word mm -hmm. alignment, which I feel like I've used way too much this, this episode, but, but I just feel it. <laughs> yeah. And like, again, with comparison, like it's so easy to hop on social media and think everyone on there is successful. Not always the case. People put on a front or they are, there's a lot of manipulative marketing and like unethical marketing tactics on there, but it's like, it's okay to not want to be on social media. It's okay 
to like not want to put on that front, even though sometimes like the platform's literally designed to make you feel like you need to do that. (laughs) So that you need to be there all the time. (laughs) Exactly. And, and you don't. And I guess this program was just my way of being like, you don't, (laughs) you don't have to, you don't have to want to be on it. You don't have to be on it at all. Like it's, or you don't have to use it every day, or you don't have to use it to sell. You can use it to just connect. Like I just wanted it to be a bit of a permission slip for people to Mm -hmm. who I, I speak with so many people who literally just say, I hate social media. And it's like, well, what if you had other channels where you were getting business so that you could enjoy social media if you wanted to, and that pressure gets taken away. So. Yes. Yes. You can still enjoy it. It's not one thing or the other. Yeah. Mm. And you also have a podcast called the Do Good Podcast. Do Good Business. Sorry. Yeah. Do Good good Business. business. Yeah. Yeah, Do Good Business. And you were talking about how sometimes businesses are not ethical. Can you bring a little bit about what you do in this podcast? What is the intention? Yeah, I love this show. I started it to have a bit of an outlet. Um, One of Rebel Office's values is to dare to equally prioritize profit, planet, and people. And I don't think it's talked about enough. I feel like something that I've always wanted to do with Rebel Office is to just like challenge the status quo or like challenge this concept of like business as usual. And Part of that way is to like treat people properly and you can make money and do good in the world as well. And um, that's really what the show's about, spotlighting businesses. Um, I've started to bring in season two a little bit more solo episodes where I'm feeling a little bit more confident to be like, yeah, um, hey, this is me and this is how we run, run Rebel Office and this is how we bring those ethical practices into our company as well. Um, but yeah, it's really just like, not necessarily about doing the right thing because there's no like it's really hard to define what right and wrong is and everyone has their own values but it's more just like how can you expand your impact and like how can you have a greater impact not only just in your bank account but also in your community or um in the world or on the people that you serve like where can you just do good and make good money is like basically the premise how can you join both those worlds it's not one or the other Ooh, yes I think there is a belief that if you want to make whatever amount of money you think is successful for you that you pay people less or that it's not possible or they have to work a lot more and it's just again another refreshing approach to see that we can do both even though it's challenging but it's helpful to hear people talk about their experiences and how they manage to get to that point and inspiring yeah. too honestly some of the guests that I've had on the show I'm just like like oh my gosh I can't even <laughs> I'll, I'll never do as good as you guys do like it's incredible <laughs> um no it's honestly it's been so cool and even just to like look inside businesses that prioritize that or keep it front of mind I think has been really inspiring for me as well with rebel office to just say like okay, yeah, you're always focused on like your offers and how you're making money and who your audience, like how to grow your audience and all this stuff. And these like very profit-based or like results-driven metrics where it's like, okay, but also like, how did you make someone's day better today? Or how, like just such small things, how can you make your team feel valued? How can you maybe reduce your energy okay online business by the way takes like an insane amount of energy and (laughs) anyways that's just a whole other conversation for another day but but no it's there's just so many avenues that our businesses can actually be used as a vehicle to like make a difference in the world as well and while that can be really overwhelming I think something for me is just like I've always wanted to like make a difference in the world and that's such a vague statement and it's very overwhelming because I'm like oh my gosh what do I what do I do to do that how can I do that and then for me I always felt disconnected with okay well I'm a business consultant that's not like what good is that bringing to the world um and finding that connection and bringing the podcast into it to introduce others to 
people who are doing it and using what I'm learning from the show and bringing it into Rebel Office as well has just been huge for me to feel like that connection's finally there and stuff starting to feel more in alignment. Yeah, and also less alone. When you hear about people that might have modeled the things you wanted to do or things, people who are starting where you were like years ago, it helps Mm -hmm. us connect to each other and relate because the entrepreneur journey, either you're a solo entrepreneur or have a team, can feel very lonely and isolated. 100%. I think that's why we both joined the mastermind that we met in too. Like, it's so great to connect with other people and be in a space where you can let that guard down, where you can actually be like, look, this is a struggle I'm, I'm going through. I don't know what to do, like help. And then you're with surrounded by people who like, are actually like, yeah, I went through that or I understand that limiting belief or whatever. So yeah, it's, I, I think, um, on top of advice for, for people for uh, limiting their social media (laughs) content, I would say as well, like surround yourself with people who share similar values or who want to, who are trying to do something similar Um, because in the online business space, like people don't really get it if they're not in it. (laughs) So being with those people um, and surrounding yourselves with those people is so important. Yeah, definitely. Like now that I think about it, when I look back, I'm like being around people was what helped me get closer to myself. I think I was so trying to do things for the longest time by myself. I had all the tools. I had all the tactics. But there was a, a connection part that I couldn't like put my finger on it. And I can't even explain it other than just being around people, you that energy is contagious. When you see one person pivoting, when you see one person changing their business or just doing the thing that was terrifying for them, it just creates a ripple effect to the rest of us. It's like, oh, maybe totally. they can do this too. Totally. And I think that is why it feels isolating because a lot of us aren't surrounded by people who are doing like our families, for example, like my parents are very you work your one job until you retire and then you're living to reti- like you're working basically to retire and finally start living right. your life. So if you're around people like that and, but I don't like, because I don't internally believe that. And I'm like, no, I deserve to live every life and be successful. And Any- anyways, um, yeah. those are, you know, <laughs> good old limiting <laughs> belief. Stuff. Um, But because I didn't internalize that and I was like, no, I believe something different. It can be very isolating when you're around people with different beliefs because it's like, well, what am I doing wrong? Or how can I like, why don't they understand that this is what I want or this is what I'm working towards? So when you finally start to be around people who are like, no, you can have more in your life and it's okay, then it's like, okay. (laughs) And then it becomes addictive and super inspiring to just be like okay well I want to hang out with you guys because you're doing it and you're showing me I can so it's like okay I can too yeah yeah the people like people say like the people that you surround yourself with is important but we don't realize how much until we're until we're in a different environment because I've been in communities where on paper it was the best like it's supposed to help my business but I never felt like I the longer resonated with with them yeah. And allowing myself to be seen in another community, in another community, like the mastermind, that was like, oh, okay. I had a lot of limiting beliefs. And also like, I need this. I need this to feel more like myself. I need human connection and also space to be by myself. I love that. And I love how you said that you like allowed yourself to be seen. I feel like I did the same thing with that program as well, where it was just like, okay, finally, like, this is who I am and I'm going to be unapologetic about it. And this is what I'm going through. And like, if you can find yourself a space where you feel safe enough to do that, I think is really important. Yeah. Beautifully summed up. (laughs) (laughs) How has business been for you this year? I know there's been so many pivots and challenges. How have you, I guess, stayed grounded and centered with your team? I think you also had a couple of new hires too. Yeah. Yeah. It's been all over the place. Um, no, honestly, I, I feel like this whole year has been a huge, it's just been like one shift after another. And a lot of it has just been me being more confident in like trusting myself and like trusting that we're on the right path. Um, yeah, lots of we've grown, but also we've changed offers. And that's a very scary thing to do when you're changing up how you make money, but you're still like growing your team to continue to support making money. Like, it's definitely been 
I I don't even know how to explain it. It's been like a muscle building, I don't know, year of me just trying to figure out and really step into like being the boss, which sounds so weird because I'm still just like little old me over here trying to run this. But um, yeah, it's it's been a huge, I don't know, learning curve, I guess, in terms of like actually being a leader and realizing that like how you set the foundations for building like a company culture and like where you're going and setting that stuff, how important it is um, because it can get out of hand really quickly. And just, I don't know, it's, it's just been like a year of constantly being like, does this feel right? Nope. Okay. What do we do about it? Or does this feel right? Yes. Okay. Let's lean into it with all we've got then. And that's just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it's been a weird, (laughs) it's been a weird year, but we've grown a lot and I feel way more confident going into this next year because I feel like now I have the skills and like, I went through all that where I can like handle things a little bit more gracefully now. I mean, we all start somewhere. I know that like if, when I hire someone, I will probably not do, you know, make a couple of mistakes. And you mentioned trusting. And this might be something that's hard to describe, but how do you cultivate trust? How do you lean into trust when things feel so overwhelming? Uh, I meditate a lot. (laughs) So I actually, um, I have like a Google Nest home, like one of those little home assistant things. And I set up a uh, routine through Google. So basically, I don't want to say it because she's going to hear me, but (laughs) it's going to start going off. But normally I'd be like, hey, person I need a break and then um okay we're good and then what it'll do (laughs) is it'll actually I recorded or I like typed out a little message that it says to me just basically reaffirming like hey you know what you're doing you're doing a good job keep going and then it'll turn on a meditation playlist from Spotify so whenever I start to feel overwhelmed I'll do that it'll give me my little pep talk that I told myself at one point and then I'll meditate until I feel like I've calmed down and that I'm feeling more grounded again Um, I think that I've gotten way better at as soon as I stop feeling grounded I I register that a lot quicker than I used to before so now I will take those that time to be like okay slow down like listen to yourself again and figure it out um and then I don't know I think even just that just helps me like think more clearly so even if I don't have a solution yet I feel a little bit more like okay well even if I don't have a solution it's going to be fine (laughs) and and then carry on that way so yeah meditation I think has been the biggest thing for sure that's such a good idea for anybody who also has one of these little devices you could set your own reminder because yeah sometimes I feel there are times where I feel like everything's going great in business and and then there are a day or two where I just feel like (gasps) defeat it for some reason and I understand now that it's just the highs and lows and just having those little reminders sometimes I screenshot like comments from people that they've let and I just read it like love notes to myself doesn't mean I'm like over my head with these because I know a lot of people that I've talked to they're like compliments feel weird I'm like yes but there's a way that they can nourish you without you letting it get over your head whatever that looks like for sure (laughs) I'm one of those compliments feel weird people but um no it's true even like if you start to collect like testimonials from clients or like you just have nice messages from people save those somewhere because whenever you're feeling like you're not you're like oh what am I doing or why am I doing this or you know those things that still come to me as well it's nice to sometimes just look at it and be like okay I know what I'm doing it's fine (laughs) it's just you know yeah right now I'm feeling down it's fine it just gives you permission to be in that low for a little bit without trying to like push it away because you Mm -hmm. for me I don't think you can push away below sometimes it's just there it's just part of the process 100% it is because then yeah if you didn't feel low then how would you know what the feeling high is and sometimes you learn a lot from the lows as well right like if I didn't feel that overwhelm and if I didn't go through all that then I wouldn't have built those tools to be able to handle how I'm doing it now so yes yes yes. amen to that (laughs) it's so true because like you're talking about even in human design they talk about like shadow expression I'm like we need to be there we need to be in both we can't just be happy-go-lucky all the time. But again, another conversation for another. <laughs> Let's go on a rant, shall we? <laughs> Let's go on a rant. This is the rant section yeah. <laughs> about things we feel passionate about. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sarah, thank you so much for everything you've shared. I know this will be so helpful for a lot of people that are 
you know, building their online business and trying to make sense of it for themselves. This has it been, never like, makes so sense. Hard. It never it makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> just, See, that's the <laughs> caveat. <laughs> You're always figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Are you absolutely. ready for some rapid fire questions? All right, hit me with them. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? <laughs> like okay, we're going so, there. Yeah, yeah. No, compliments are weird. Uh, I don't handle them well. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how to answer this question because when someone compliments me, I like black out and I'm like, nope, like I can't hear it. It's definitely something I need to uh, to work on. <laughs> so yeah. I don't have an answer for, you for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest and sharing this because it's a discomfort a lot of us feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A book that's changed your life. Uh, from a business perspective, I would say Traction by Gino Wickman. I recommend it to everyone. But from like a just personal development, um, I would say Big Magic, which might feel really cliche. And I haven't read it in a really okay. long time. But it was the first book that I read that like opened my eyes to the mindset world and like how what I believe impacts what happens and stuff so yeah I, I want to go back and read that one I love it's one of my favorite books big magic from Elizabeth Gilbert right unless yes. there's another one <laughs> no yeah yeah oh <laughs> um, what does coming home mean to you oh my gosh I love this question um that's kind of hard like it, it's definitely not a physical location for me like it's it's more me feeling like myself and because I've I've gone through like I don't know we didn't really get into mental health but like I've gone through a whole lot of stuff and I've let myself get lost in a lot of pro like environments and I feel like for me anytime that I feel like I'm fully who I'm meant to be at that time that's where I feel confident um and I feel at home, like I, I love traveling. So it, yeah, it's not really a physical location. I have a beautiful home with a beautiful family and like, they're, they're great. <laughs> but I think that it always comes back to, to who I am and how much I love myself or like whenever I'm leaning into that and feel like I do fully love myself. That's what coming home feels like. For me. Mm, I chills from that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like more of? Oh my goodness. Um, I think something big that I'm working on now is just, just trust and like being able to trust that I'm doing the right thing and um, that I'm making the right choices and that I just, I don't know. I mean, there's so much, I, I, I mean, abundance, but not even from a financial standpoint, like, like I would wish that I was better at feeling gratitude. I wish that, um, more people were like happier in the world. And I know we talked about how it's not always about happiness, but I just wish that people would like do what they want to do. Like life is so short. And for me, I get really frustrated when I see, and like, I still do it. I limit myself as well, but it's like, what do you have to lose? There's no, like the sun's going to come up tomorrow anyways. So like, just go for it. And I just wish there was more of that in the world too. <laughs> That was so sweet. I don't know why I'm like, there's tears coming. It's true. <laughs> I feel like I'm on like Miss Canada or something where I'm like, I want world peace. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a genuine energy, right? <laughs> I know. No, it is. Yeah. Any advice or words for your younger self? Don't care what people think. It's a big one. Something I'm working on right now as well. I didn't realize I had like inner child healing to do have you done any of yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah and like didn't realize this was a thing I recently did like a soul reading circle um with someone from Instagram and in like another program that I'm in and one of the readings for me was like oh well I'm getting this vision of you when you were younger like cowered over and like all this stuff and I'm like oh my gosh I totally thought that all this stuff that she brought up was behind me and a lot of it always came back to other people's perceptions and how I didn't want to let people down and all this stuff and it's just kind of like if I could go back and just like build that armor around me a little bit to just be like just who cares what other people think like you're gonna grow and like it's something that's still and I think that's why I'm also we talked about the antisocial seller and like 
social media, I think that's also why I kind of prioritize that because it's like for everyone else, it doesn't matter. Like you've got to love yourself and that's really all that matters at the end of the day. And it also ties together with, you know, your values and rebel office. I mean, <laughs> I, the first time I read about like the name of your company, it was the one that stuck, stuck with me. And I'm like rebel office or someone here in Canada and one of the master <laughs> irony is rebel <laughs> office, but it, you're actually embodying that, right? About Thank you. Okay. That's the best compliment I think I have ever received. No, honestly, because I, I, I value it. Like I really prioritize it. I think it's important for people to look through things from a different lens and to not just get stuck thinking that they have to do something because that's how it's always been done or because someone else says that that's the way to do it. I think that's bullshit. Personally. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Anybody who wants to work with Sarah, she will help you align to yourself and also do business in a way that's fun. Yeah, so important. I th- Yeah, people just need to have more fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that should be the episode. People should have more fun. <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, oddly enough, kind of ironically, um, but at Rebel Office on Instagram. Um, I've really enjoyed being on there lately. So um, there's there or rebeloffice.ca you can learn all about our services and connect with me there as well what programs do you currently have or anything that you know people are excited to get their hands on yeah absolutely I mean from a technical standpoint we have um, a suite of digital manuals so sort of SOPs and like manual for market research or how to roadmap for your business that's in our shop Um, If you go to rebeloffice.ca or if you're looking to just let go of some projects and let us handle it and make sure that it's done right, we have our on-demand service as well. Um, But definitely if you're looking for a second set of eyes on your business and to really work through and like build a solid foundation for your business moving forward, um, our work parties are the way to go and we'll just have a freaking blast doing them. So. One day, one day in the next couple of years, I'm like, I'm going to have a work party. I hope, well, if you're still offering. I think we will be. I love them. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Is there any final words you want to share? Uh, I don't think so, Jess. It's been amazing. I had such a great time. I mean, I love connecting with you. Um, and I feel like I got super philosophical in some weird parts and that's normally not me. So it. sorry if I like, sound like I'm preaching, but I don't know. I just... Um, yeah, lean into what you really want to do and just figure it out and make it happen. There's always a way and it's probably not going to happen on the timeline that you want it to happen on. But as long as you're, as long as you're open to making it happen and trying different things to figure it out, then that's kind of the beauty of pivoting and just kind of being open and adapting. And yeah, you'll get there. You'll figure it out and you're awesome. I feel like I needed this. You dropped so many like <laughs> business gems, but also like life philosophical. And it's such a beautiful reflection of how like our business are an extension of us. If we don't take care of ourselves, then, you know, it's hard to expect your business to be successful. 100%. There's no way you can run a successful business if you're like, I, I, I want to say yeah. dead, but that's not the right word. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, 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 if, you're like, <laughs> if you're like burnt out, you can't show up and like run your business to the best of its ability. So yeah, I 100% agree with you. So important. Yeah, amen to that. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.